another great report brought forward and answering these questions. Um, I'd like to focus on VESCOR, which when I read the statements in the report that you had made, um, very troubling. Um, you've got an organization, which I understand was created by the legislature some time ago, deals with $18 billion in public sector money uh, through pensions, um, millions paid out in bonuses to the executives of VESCOR on top of salaries. And I'm just curious, I mean, from what I read, they've, they've blocked you from any type of investigation or following out on your duties. If, if it's not you that they do or answer to to some extent, if it's not the legislature, if it's not the Public Accounts Committee, who does VESCOR report to? Um, so there are, the VESCOR has a board of directors. Um, VESCOR is owned by the two pension plans, so both pension plans have a board of directors. Um, my understanding is that they're also responsible to the superintendent of pensions and um, FCNB, Financial Consumer New Brunswick. So there's, there's a number of mechanisms, but those are largely um, typical to private sector investment companies. And so the, the question is, and this is why I put it for the decision makers, is do, do the decision makers feel that they should be accountable to the legislature and to the public because of their unique, uh, new, uniquely created, they're a uniquely created entity, which is a creation of the New Brunswick legislature. Uh, and they're given not-for-profit status by virtue of this act. Um, and they have uh, 14 billion in New Brunswick plans as a minimum, but they're never gonna have to compete for business like a private sector firm. There's just so many components to it that when I sit back and look at it, to me, it's, it should be held accountable to the public through having to represent uh, to the Public Accounts Committee. And, and of course, my office, I feel, should be able to have access, the same as we always did in the past, to do both financial audit work and performance audits. Yeah, and, you know, when you mention that VESCOR is a not-for-profit, and I'm seeing hundreds of thousands in salaries, I'm seeing millions paid out in bonuses, what defines not-for-profit? I mean, at some point, you know, you have to wonder what that even means. Um, in your attempt to get information from VESCOR in your investigation to, to do your report, um, there's obviously a discrepancy uh, between what your office thinks is um, its obligation and right versus VESCOR um, holding back and, and trying to, to block your investigation. Did the AG office attempt any legal challenges to your investigation of VESCOR? Mm -hmm. um, we, we do have uh, two lawyers on, on staff now, so we would have had a discussion internally as we were having these 11, 11 letters of exchanges with VESCOR who, uh, it, by the nature of the exchanges, they had their legal uh, people uh, supporting them. Um, but we didn't go beyond that. Uh, I guess depending on how this plays out and what the response is to our recommendations, eventually it might have to be a decision made in the courts, but I surely hope it doesn't come to that because that's a costly, lengthy, all charge to the pension plans exercise which in my mind doesn't make any sense if uh, what it comes down to is do the, does the government, as we're making this recommendation to the Minister of Finance and Treasury Board, which, which position do they, do they feel or, what, or do they want? Mm -hmm. And it's amend the Auditor General Act and name VESCOR as an auditable entity. It's very simple. It could be done very quickly. But if they don't agree with that, then the option to the Auditor General is to go the legal route, which I would find very unfortunate. Yeah, and, and I, I certainly appreciate that view because, you know, to, you're right, to fight it in courts, I'm no doubt, would cost a lot of money and, and that hurts taxpayers in the end too. 
Um, but I really, really uh, have issue with that amount of money uh, being the financial managers of these pensions, and there just seemingly is no public accountability to any um, of the work that they do. Um, one point that you raised that I do want to ask, um, you mentioned you had concerns about uh, government appointed board members to VESCOR reporting back to government. Um, can mm -hmm. you elaborate on that or why that would be a concern? Um, so in the report, uh, it, during the exchange in the floor of the legislature when the bill was being debated, when uh, the accountability question was being asked, let me see in paragraph 65, I just go to that and see what it said. Okay, so to the side of paragraph 65, some oversight processes appear to contradict what legislators were told. Even though legislators were told the province would have some oversight through its appointed members to the board, we found this may not be the case. We met with the chair of the board of trustees of the public service pension plan to understand some of the processes in place to provide oversight of VESCORP. We were informed provincially appointed members of the board do not represent the interest of the province when providing oversight. Instead, as mentioned in paragraph 16, the boards manage the plans in the best interest of both the active and the retired members. So this is the issue about when you're on a board, your fiduciary duty is to the organization, not regardless of how you were appointed or who appointed you, your fiduciary duty is to the organization. We were also informed these provincially appointed members do not report to the province with respect to oversight of VESCOR, which is what, you know, the response by the representatives that day were alluding to, that there was still an oversight capability there, but there isn't when we talk to the board chair. Right. In our view, this appears to contradict what legislators were told regarding the province's ability to question their appointed representatives. So. Yeah. No, I appreciate that, and, and uh, I want to thank you for, for highlighting this, and so average Joe public can understand, I mean, when, you, when your office does these types of reports and the work that leads to the, to the conclusion of the reports, um, you, you know, you, you've basically, for the most part, got unfettered access, which is the way it should be. I mean, you should be able to, to question these uh, financial uh, statements and programs and their efficiencies and whatnot, and it, when I hear that there's barriers or that there's some friction in, in, in being open to your office about, you know, some of the questions you're asking, um, that should concern every taxpayer and uh, all of us as, a, as committee members, and I'm sure it does. As a result, um, I would like to present a motion uh, requesting that VESCOR present themselves before the Public Accounts Committee in order to answer pertinent questions that have arisen as a result of the Auditor General's report. Mr. Chair. Okay, so uh, it has been moved by Mr. Austin. Um, I would like to present a motion requesting that VESCOR present themselves before the Public Accounts Committee in order to answer pertinent questions that have arisen as a result of the Auditor General's report. So um, we can discuss this now, or we can set it aside till the end of the day, depending on the will um, of, the, of the committee. Um, so, does anybody have any comments? Mr. Kerr? I, I have no problem with setting aside to the end of the day, but I'm, I just wonder, do we need a motion to 
bring a group to or, or a, a, a company to public accounts? Can we not just decide, or you as the chair person decide to bring them with your 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 committee that you have? Uh, yes, most certainly we we could uh, make that uh, request, um, but Mr. Austin has put this forward, so um, I believe that this committee is is a committee that we will, we will all work together. So if that's the will of him to put this motion forward, I accept the motion. Okay. And and we'll see what the committee chooses to do with it. Perfect. Thank you. Okay. Mr. Melanson. Thank you, uh, Madam Chair. Um, I, I got no problem with the motion, but uh, I think we should put it aside. We discuss it at the end, so so we can not um, not it would be the, the auditor general's waste 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 time. But I mean, I think there's other stuff that we need to question and ask, and and I get the uh, intent of this motion, so we can deal with it after. Mr. Cohn. Yeah, I, I think that it actually is important to have a motion um, on calling Vescor just because of the way they behaved with the Auditor General, because they are in this weird netherland uh, of, an or, of a, a corporation created by an act of this Legislative Assembly. And I know at the time, uh, I think I said it on this floor of this chamber, that this was going to be trouble. Um, so uh, let's call trouble to the legislature and hear what they have to say to us. Okay, so um, we will set this aside. So I'd ask all uh, parties to think about what their decision will be on this. Um, and uh, as chair, I most certainly will welcome the motion and we'll discuss it among all of my colleagues at any time. So uh, uh, we will um, move that aside till the end of the day, but it will be discussed. And we will now move on.